Hello and welcome to Friday's Masterclass edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm going to be attempting today's Times Cryptic Crossword with some degree of trepidation. Um, this puzzle, the Snitch Rating, which is the unofficial uh, sort of rating of how difficult a Times Crossword is, says that this, that well, in the last year, there has only been one puzzle that is harder than this one. <laughs> that is quite terrifying. In fact, let's have a look at the stats and see what we can see. So Moan is John McCabe, who's a ridiculously fast solver and often finishes the puzzle somehow in sort of just over three minutes. So 7.49 for John is very long. I, I don't believe the top times. There are a lot of typists. Uh, Misty Gris is real, 8.54. Um, all of these are going to be real. Andy Fisher as a name I recognise. But perhaps the, the place to start, though, is Matthew Marcus Verlaine, 11.36. Matthew Marcus is the current, the reigning Times Crossword champion. And I would guess has an average time of something like five minutes for a puzzle. So 11 minutes 36 gives a very good idea of how monstrously hard this is. Henry White used to be a fantastic, well, is a fantastic solver. Um, uh, but especially of the listener series, I remember. So yeah, this is going to be a brute. A couple of things to mention before we kick into it, though. Um, I'm going to start off by just mentioning a tweet that I saw this week that made me smile. And this is the comedian Tim Vine, who, with John Archer uh, and their tour manager Jobbins, um, finished a Times crossword for the first time. And the reason this made me smile was look at this grid. This is exactly what my grids used to look like back in the day. Well, when, when I when I solved on paper and when I hadn't been doing the puzzle for sort of decades, which is now obviously the case, you know, and there'd be crossings out everywhere, words scrawled at angles. Um, you know, I'd had to have used at least two different pens, which means I didn't get it done in one sitting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a blast from the past and a, a, just a, a lovely picture uh of what solving cryptic crosswords is like and well well done to well done to the trio for getting through it um mention of jane asher who quite famously solves the times puzzle and of course the great dave gorman so it's a, a real case interesting isn't it how many comedians apparently like cryptic crosswords i suppose it's it's fairly natural because they must love language um so anyway, that, that's one thing, made me smile. Um, and speaking of people who love language, a quick shout out as well to Anthony Etherin, um, who is a poet I follow. There are two poets I follow on Twitter. One is Anthony Etherin, one is Brian Bilston. They're both fantastic. <laughs> and every now and again, you guys write in and say, well, have you seen the work of Anthony Etherin? Isn't it brilliant? Uh, yes, it is brilliant. Um, let me, uh, I, I, I found an example that I really like. And it's just so ludicrous. <laughs> it's so ludicrous. But if you love language, again, you will appreciate, and if you love crosswords, you will love this. This is an anagram sonnet for Charles Darwin. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that each line here is an anagram of every other line. I kid you not, this, this, po this is a real poem which, which clearly references Charles Darwin's, is, Charles Darwin's life, if you read it. It rhymes, it scans, and every line is an anagram of the next. I won't take up more of your time by reading it, but I mean, just incredible. So Anthony Etherin, ch check him out. Um, now, with that said and done, let's move on. Let's have a look at this um, Times crossword. It's not the quick cryptic today. We're going to have to do the hard one. Let's get cracking. Hopefully the window's in the right place. One across. Recite the rosary holding a rope. Hmm. Well, I don't know what this is, but recite the rosary feels like it might be a five letter word to me because I like holding a to mean put an a inside. So if we, if we could think of a five letter word for, oh, well, recite the rosary could also be trying to hint at a homophone for a word that means the rosary. Oh, I don't know. Lariat is the only word I can think of for six letters that means rope. Hmm. 
I don't think Larit means anything, does it? No, I don't know what that is. Uh, unsurprising. This is, I think this is going to be a monstrously difficult puzzle. Um, article bobbing around a water channel. Article bobbing around. Feels like an anagram of article followed by A to give a water channel. Oof. Again, that... No idea what that is either. Okay, that's not the ideal start. Let's try four across. Spread stories, backing daughter, record is very good. Spread stories. No, I haven't got a clue. Spread stories. Obviously, that sounds like it's, you know, to spread stories, to gossip. But I wonder if it's it's a sort of noun, it, you know, stories that have been spread. And there's a there's a short word, ana, A-N-A, um, which is sort of uh, stories that are told and, and recited in law. I think it's from the Nordic mythologies. I'll just just let me um, see if that's even true. Probably isn't now I've said it. Um, well, a collection of someone's table talk or gossip, literary anecdotes. Literary anecdotes. So it does mean that, um, but it doesn't say it's, it's Nordic in origin. Um, it's, but um, problem is that's pangram. Uh, sorry, palindromic anyway. So <laughs> spread stories backing would suggest reversing it, and that's not going to be necessary if it's palindromic. So this is not good. Let's let's see if we can just get anything. Take advantage of endless ribbon. Use. Take advantage of. Exploit. I don't know. This is going, this is awful so far. Let's try, I've got to get something. After some deliveries, I'm thinking I haven't read the rest of the clue, but I'm thinking some deliveries in cricket. If you bowl six deliveries, it's an over, isn't it? So over the something, I bet this is. Uh, article, well, the, the definite article in speech is the word the, is on shelf for unrestricted purchase. Over the, over the counter. Yeah, I think that's right, isn't it? An unrestricted purchase feels like it's over the counter. As a, as a, well, as the opposite would be a, a sort of under the counter, which is has a sort of nefarious quality, and it certainly would be a restricted purchase. So I think over the counter is going to be correct there. And you can see if we look at the checking letters we're getting, we're getting an O and E, a T, that's not bad, an E and O. I mean, the T and the N are the only things of any use there. So let's try and use them. Popular champion throwing kid jokily into the air. Gosh, this reminds me. Um, what was it? The bumps, you know, when you used to throw people up in the air. I remember my friend James at school and it was his birthday so everyone gave him the bumps and it was like a spirit overtook the group he was thrown up into the air and like everyone everyone just didn't catch him and he fell and he landed and it was it was awful it was awful and I don't to this day know how it happened um it was like it was like you know it was like Loki was among us um Anyway, that's completely thrown me. <laughs> Sorry about that, James. Um, popular champion, throwing kid. Throwing kid. Mm, jokely into the air. Popular champion. Popular is, if something is in, it's popular. Champion throwing kid jokely into the air. I mean, I'm thinking, could it be an anagram of kid in a word like tune? A tune is an air, isn't it? As in a song. Air on a G string is a tune. Um, I can't think of what that... I can't think of a word that would fit. If, let's try 11 across. Curious old method of payment. Okay, well, that's... This is a weird clue. Because it's gone from all of these brutal clues to something that's fairly obvious here. So curious, we need a three-letter word that means curious. 
old can be abbreviated to O. A method of payment, well, direct debit is a method of payment, and that can be DD. So if we know a few abbreviations, we can literally write this one in. Let's try and get 22 across. Close, if you're close to someone you're near. Match. Oh, okay, it's 90. <laughs> I thought it was near. It's not. If, if something is close, it's nigh. Uh, and then if, if you match something, you tie it, don't you? If you match someone's score, you would tie with them. And one's rarely worn out. Well, a, a nighty would be a, a piece of clothing that would be rarely worn outside. Um, yeah, whereas obviously the clue is trying to make you think about somebody, who, somebody who's rarely worn out, as in rarely tired, I suppose. Let's try eight down with a D in it. Birds no longer. Well, I'm thinking extinct birds. Can I think of any extinct birds that would go here? And I can think of dodos. Now, I'm wondering if the plural of dodos is D-O-D-O-E-S. So if something suffices, it does, doesn't it? So, or suffice might be do as stuffing for cooks. Yeah, I think it is. If you cook something, you do it. So cooks is does. If you do dinner, you cook dinner, don't you? So, so, and then do for suffice goes in the middle. And dodos, I presume this is a valid or the correct plural for the word dodo. Um, well, tune on the outside here doesn't seem completely outrageous. Mm, don't know. Let's try 15 across. Woman martyred with stiletto or revolver, perhaps, during annual festivities. Goodness me. Woman martyred. I'm trying to think of a nine-letter lady's name. I'm Charlotte is what's, what's going into my mind. Um... With stiletto or revolver? What's that, a weapon? An arm? During annual festivities. Hmm, I don't know. Um, should we try six down? Drunken Caledonian clubs ejected. Yeah, okay. So do we... Do we know what Caledonian means? Well, I always think it means Scottish. So that's the first word that came into my mind. Um, and if I eject an abbreviation for clubs, which is C, and if you're thinking, well, why is C a valid abbreviation for clubs? That's from Bridge. Um, so hearts, clubs, diamonds and spades. If you, if you ever look at a bridge bidding, it'll be displayed as one diamond or one D, one C, etc. So we take uh, C out of Scottish, we get sottish. And I think that can be an adjective meaning drunken because a sot is a drunk. So sottish, I think, is almost certainly going to be a word. I mean, it's not, not a word I've used in common speech very often, but I think it'll be, it'll be in the dictionary. Spread stories, backing daughter, record is very good. I think it's going to mean very good. Now, I'm wondering, backing door to record. Well, there is a type, an old type of record was an extended play record, EP. So if I back D-E-P, I would get P-E-D. Maybe, maybe with is as well, actually. Gossiped. Oh, bother. <laughs> bobbins, bobbins. I mean, it's so annoying. I mean, that's the first thing I thought of. I just didn't think it, I didn't think spread stories was the definition. So that shows, um, that shows even, even with decades of experience, I'm still absolutely hopeless. So sp spread stories, gossiped, backing, and then we have to back, we have to reverse. D, E, P, I, S for is, very, if something is very, it's so, and then G for good. So it's a massive long abbreviation reversal. And that gives us a P in seven down. Proud, fervent speech praising the railway. Proud. If you're proud, you are pro. You're. Ah. Uh, 
speech, oration, praising the railway. Praising the railway has a question mark as well. So I don't know what that's getting at. Now we've got popular champion throwing kid jokely into the air. Popular champion. And then we've got the lady being martyred here. And we've got another long answer here. Drink that has naval ratings, finally, bouncing wildly. Well, that looks like an anagram of naval bouncing and the final letter of the word ratings, which would be, is that the right number of letters? Eight. Yes, it is. It's, it's 14. And the answer is 14. So this is going to be an anagram. Um, naval S bouncing. Nine five. So what is this second word? And it's the name of a drink. Something lag? No, lager, there's no E in it. It's probably it's probably the name of a cocktail. Now <laughs> My knowledge of names of cocktails is probably limited to what I've found in cryptic crosswords over time. Um, let's try nine down, see if we can get another letter or two in this. Around sunset, fag break. Something, I want this to be something up time. Finishing up time or something, something like that. Around sunset evening fag break um, closing up time clocking off time oh I don't know let's try oh, 20 down we get three starting letters if we can get it capital of a country in Africa British wanted back hmm See, that's a terrifying clue. We're we going to have to know some obscure capital city. Don't know. Let's try that one. Let's, yes, there we go. The constructor's got tired by this point and has just written in the first thing, the first clue they could think of. Bowled over by quiet dance. OK, well, if we know our cricket uh, abbreviations, we'll be in for a good time here. Bold, if you see a cricket st scorecard, bold will be B if somebody is bowled out. Uh, it would be B dot is what you'd see on a cricket scoreboard. It, however, how, how many overs a bowler of bold would be indicated by O and quiet on a musical score? Well, you will see P um, and that gives bop and a bop is a dance. Um, yes, something that I did go to very occasionally at university and it was always fairly disastrous. That was me in the corner. <laughs> uh, uh, now, a Bible going out for primate in Asia. Okay, so this is going to be some sort of gibbon, I think. I think it's an anagram of a Bible going. Out here is the anagram indicator. And I can see gibbon is there in the anagram fodder. So what are we left with if we take out gibbon? We're left with... A, we're left with L, E, G, uh, and something. Is it an I? Oh, hang on. Oh, so it's, some, it's some, something like that. Uh, that does, I've probably got the wrong, I've probably extracted the wrong letters there because that doesn't look like it's going to give me anything very lovely does it oh is it large gibbon maybe no no there is no r i'm having brain brain freeze there but i can't see what that is what on earth is going on <laughs> hopefully i've just extracted the oh hang on no there is an e in it right i was suddenly thinking is it an anagram at all but no it is 
G I A L E. G I A L E. So it is an anagram of this. Agile Gibbon? An Agile Gibbon? Is that a thing? <laughs> Might be. <laughs> I mean, it seems a bit superfluous, doesn't it? As tautologists. <laughs> it's like saying <laughs> Hairy Gibbon or something. <laughs> <laughs> Good tree climbing gibbon. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, agile gibbon might be right. I don't know. Let's try 27 across. Security on door. Vital at flat. Security on door. Vital at flat. It's a clever clue, actually. Keypad is a key. If something's key, it's vital. And a flat is a pad, pad. So keypad is um, security you might get on a door. And we've managed to luck into that one. Let's try 19 down now. Soil is black, say, except initially round the edge. Goodness me, there's a lot going on there. Beguile is the word I'm thinking of. I don't think it is that. Begrime, maybe. If you soil something, you begrime. Yeah, I quite like begrime. Yes, it is big rhyme. Right, so again, remember, one side of the clue is always going to be the definition, or almost always in a cryptic crossword. So here, the word soil, it looks like it might be a noun, but to soil could be to begrime something. How does it work? Well, black can be B. Uh, I think that's from pencils abbreviations. Let's just have a look at that. B, does it actually give any context for what B black on lead pencils to indicate softness there we go so B say if you for example is eg that's what say means or one of the meanings of it except initially is the initial letter of the word except that's this e in the clue because that goes around a word that means edge which is rim so big rhyme is how we get now now this was the drink wasn't it Right. Na um, oh, what is it? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think my, my anagramming's gone to pop here. Let's try this one. Shown, veiled, screened. Yeah, that's quite nice, isn't it? It's a simple double def definition. And the word screened, once you think about it, it does mean veiled. If you screen something, you sort of shroud it, don't you? And if you, sh But if you show something, if you air it, you do screen it as well. Oh, goodness. So what is this then? End oh, something Blanc. Oh, is it going to be like Sauvignon Blanc or something? It's the name of a wine. Ah, OK. Right. Chinon Blanc? It's not enough letters. So, okay, so we're going to have to work out what we've got to take out of this then. So, we're going to have NAV S. Oh, is it Sauvignon? Maybe it is Sauvignon. I didn't think it was enough. Sauvignon. Oh, yeah. No, it is right. Sauvignon. Okay. Um, for some reason in my brain, Sauvignon doesn't feel like it's... Um, nine letters long it feels like it's longer but i think that's right um so now we could have a look at 18 down bad boys two homes well i think it's going to be well okay yeah <laughs> i don't know my brain here went to the answer which i think is villain but it was associating that with the word bad because I think in my brain I was thinking I needed a boy's name and I was th I was thinking Vic or something or some extrapolation of VI something where it's not just wrong it's a bad boy a bad boy is a villain two homes well a villa is a home and if you're at home you are in so villain is going to be correct there now what have we got nine oh this was the something up time well if, if it is something up time or clocking on time Fag. What's a fag? Is that? I mean, it's like a cigarette. Smoke. 
I don't know. L blank P at the end of this though, perhaps drink too much overlap. That's a coincidence. Well, a coincidence of two things is when they overlap. Um, so I think, and if you overlap, you do literally drink too much. So overlap is right. This is up. This is probably time, but we're not sure. Um, we get an O, O, we get an O in this one. Bogota is a capital, but it's not in Africa. Let's just put that down. Oh, well, that's right. Okay, that's very lucky. That's very lucky. So I know Cap um, Bogota is a capital. I think of Colombia, isn't it? Um, so how does it work? How does the clue work? Well, we need A. That's this A of A. So the, the A there is there. A country in Africa is Togo. And B is British. And that is all wanted to go back. So it, it reverses and that gives us Bogota. Now that could be useful person regularly taking tablet okay if you're regularly taking a drug you are on that drug aren't you a tablet in a in a drug sense would be a tablet of e so on e gives us one and a person is one um so that, that's tricky that's, that's tricky because again that's a that's a clue i think you get with experience um, to split the clue up that way is is natural if you're if you've done a lot of these things but otherwise it probably look just looks like you know uh, magic and mystery 26 across one missing a work meeting told to go inside one missing an absentee a work meeting Oh, if you're sent, you're told to go. A work meeting is a bee, like a spelling bee. Uh, or it weren't bees, where, didn't you get sewing bees, where people all got together and made quilts and things? So I think, I think absentee I like here. So one missing, one missing is an absentee. A is that A there. Remember, we've talked about this a lot. There shouldn't be anything superfluous. In a cryptic crossword clue very occasionally it is acceptable to add something that could be viewed as superfluous to improve the surface reading of the clue and we did see an example of that i elided over it actually in 19 down if we look at um look at 19 down again soil is black say except initially round the edge now you could say what is the word of the doing in that clue so if we if we look at the 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 wordplay again, it's B E G and E first letter of except round a word that means edge. Now you don't need technically you don't need that V, do you? Because and and if you read the clue, soil is black, say except initially round edge. The only you know the edge gives the clue a slightly better phrasing. Um, but you could you could argue that the V is superfluous. So, but but you'll see very little uh, of anything superfluous in cryptic crossword clues generally, and that is why this A here in twenty six is is definitely necessary. Because if we if if we again if we think about what happens to the clue and its structure if we miss it out, one missing work meeting told to go inside, it means exactly the same as one missing a work meeting told to go inside. So that A is there for a reason, and the reason is it's necessary for the word play because it is literally the first letter of the answer. It's that A. So one missing, an absentee. A, they say here, work meeting B, B double E, uh, and then told to go is sent, and that goes inside our work meeting. Now, okay, let's try 13 down. Four footers balance unsteadily, suspicious at first round vehicle. Gosh, a lot, lot going on there. Four footers. I mean, that could literally, the answer here could be any four, four legged animal. <laughs> um, balance unsteadily. I mean, it could be an anagram. Balance, absolutely. Suspicious at first. Yeah, so I don't know what this is, but if you if I was guessing, 
I would say it's going to be an anagram of balance. The letter S for suspicious at first, the first letter of the word suspicious. And that's that's going to go around a three letter vehicle. So I'm thinking car or van, which could, both of which could go here. Four footers. Uh, no, my anagramming's just gone to pot today. Car. Uh, I can't see that. I'll come back to that when I'm absolutely desperate. Uh, let's try that one again. Proud. Fervent speech. Praising the wet rail. Oh, it's going to be some sort of rant. A fervent speech is a rant. So it's going to be something like pro. What's the what's the union that governs the railways? Is it the NUR? Pro pro neurant, wasn't it? Something like that. Pro uh, proud. So I think it's going to be something like that. Praising the railway. A pro line rant, or it's something like that. I think. Pro, uh, proud. It's not protuberant, is it? I was thinking of the railways as is the tube in London, the Underground Railway. Protuberant, I think, might be a word. I didn't. I thought that meant to. I'm, I'm confusing it in my brain with protrude, protuberant. I quite like that. Tribute would go in there then. Popular champion. Is that a tribute? Hmm. Throwing popular champion. Throwing kid. Oh, if you rib someone, R-I-B, you, you kid jokily with them. Tribune. And that goes into tune. We've already thought about tune as a possibility for for an heir. So Tribune must be a popular champion. And again, look at the word throwing here. Quite an interesting choice. Um, and valid, I think. But but it's quite tricky because throwing could be an anagram indicator and here the constructors using it to just mean toss a word that means kid jokily into a word that means the air so again into the air is a much more natural phrase isn't it than into air but the the isn't technically necessary quite cool um now what's this oh it's the martyred lady Woman martyred with stiletto. Some oh, Catherine wheel. It's Catherine wheel. How have I got that with heel? Yeah, I don't understand where my brain got picked that out from, but it has. Well done, brain, for once. Um, woman martyred. That must be Catherine. It must be Saint Catherine, I suppose. Uh, there, I mean, Saint Catherine is certainly a saint. Wouldn't necessarily be the first saint I might think of, but I think that must be what it's getting at. With is wa. That isn't a valid abbreviation for, for with. A stiletto is a heel. And a revolver. So I was I was reading stiletto or re, or revolver as indicating I was thinking of Cluedo I think <laughs> I don't know why because well there's, isn't there a dagger in Cluedo um, anyway or clue as it's called in America I think um, anyway I, I was reading those two phrases together or those two words together but actually I need to cut the clue um, after the word or a revolver perhaps during annual festivities well a Catherine wheel is what you would see on fireworks night isn't it so okay that i'm not going to put that oh, we'll do i'll put the in there that's definitely ending ing so something up time drinking up time 
around sunset. You see, evening. Evening could go in the middle. Fag break. So if this, if the, what would this word be then? Hmm. I'm not sure. I don't know. I feel I, sh I feel I should be able to get that. Um, oh, this is the four footers one. So what's our vehicle? See, van and car don't look very nice at all now, do they? Ooh, um, three letter vehicles. I don't know. Oh, could it be something? Could it be like one of those SUV? ATV all terrain vehicle? No. Four footers. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look. Right. Improve painting. If you retouch, you improve painting, don't you? That's thoroughly wet. What a pain. Ouch. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's that's a that's a strange clue in the in the sense that as you read it, improve painting. That's that's what I did. I thought, do I know any seven letter words that mean that? And I thought retouch, and that's the answer. So it sort of fell out. Um, that's thoroughly wet. Well, ret is a word. That, it's an old word, I think, that means to soak. Um, I'm not changing the answer, so I'm happy to look it up in the dictionary. Ret. Oh, maybe it doesn't say it's an old word. I assume it's an old word because it's only, you know, I've never heard it used ever, except in cryptic crosswords, uh, but to soak. So ret and then ouch. If you say what well, something that gives you pain, you might react to it. Oh, tetrapods or something then. It must be tetra, mustn't it? Four footers. Tetra. Ba oh, balance unsteadily. Teeter, perhaps. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Tita would be double E, unless tet unless it's oh tram maybe tetrameters four footers. Oh goodness, it's it's talking about um, poetry meter. Then oh Anthony Etherin would have just written this one in. Um, I was thinking it meant four, four, four-footed animals, but four footers in a poetic sense would be tetrameters, um, because a foot is a measure of a sort of, of po poetic rhythm, isn't it? So let's look at that just to show you a division of a line of poetry. Um, so I think this is tetrameters. I haven't quite under so it's teeter for balance unsteadily. It wasn't an anagram of balance. Uh, so it's teeter. S was right. That is the beginning of the word suspicious. And that all goes around tram. So it gives us an extra letter for the three letter. What I said was the three letter vehicle. Um, now, has that, oh, lighting, oh, lighting up town. Lighting up time is what it's going to be. Uh, I think, again, I think lighting up time still exists. It's when, it's when the sort of street lamps come on, isn't it? Um, around sunset, so lighting up time. Fag break, that's when you, so if it's like a cryptic reference. If you light up a cigarette, that would be when you had your fag break, you would, it would be your lighting up time. So actually that's, that's a bit easier than I was making it. Um, now, do we try one down? Let's try one down. We've at least got some better letters. Oh, this is our water channel. Uh, a race is some sort of water channel. Article. Oh, it could. Hmm. Like there, are, I think there's words like. Mm, I want to say mi milk race. Mill race is a word, I think. Hmm, I don't know. I'm still wondering whether this is an anagram of article around A, which was, was the first thought. 
ending in race, and then it would be what T I L and A at the start anagrammed tail race. Hmm, could be a tail race. Do you think? You think that could be a word? I've never heard of it. A tail race. I mean, I do think that there is. I do think there's a word mill race, and I think race does mean a water, some sort of channel for water or movement of water through that channel. So I might go for tail race and see if it, um, see if it gives us any joy with the acrosses. Recite the rosary, holding a rope. Um, can we think of a name here that rope recite the rosary beads beads are the rosary aren't they so beads holding a I've got too many vowels um, maybe tail race is wrong let's try it. oh I haven't I've never looked at this clue ad-libbing Improvising or something. Improvident, I like. Station jingle. Ad living is improv, isn't it? Improv. Station. Jingle. I mean, improvident, I really like. Ident. I think an ident is something. But I don't know what that something is. <laughs> Could it be a station jingle? Ident. Improv ident. I quite like it. Um, I I can't justify it without claiming ident. I-D-E-N-T is a word that would be synonymous with station jingle. If it is, then the clue is fine. And I think there is a word ident. I just don't know. So what I might do is see if the O and the P get justified. And if they do, then we'll lock it in and we'll look it up and see whether ident is there. Let's try two down. Take advantage of endless ribbon. If you take advantage of somebody, tap maybe, and I'm just thinking of tape and shortening it. If you tap into something, or if you, I think if you tap, you do take advantage. What on earth is this then? Recite the rosary. First you get down on your knees, fiddle with your rosaries, bow your head in great respect and genuflect, genuflect, genuflect. <laughs> I have to be careful nowadays, not, you know, you, you can quote Tom Lehrer and people think you're being serious and then, then you get, get into trouble. Um, but uh, anyway, three down, <laughs> Old King got up on pickup truck, oh a pickup truck is an, a, a ute. Uh, anyone who's watched Neighbours in the old days will know that. Um, to make careful speech. That's what I was trying to do by not quoting too much Tom Lehrer. Uh, old King got up. So we need an Old King Cole. Elocute. Yes, to elocute is, as in elocution. I could well believe that's a word. Right, so what's this then? A tether is a rope. Oh, no, it's an anagram. Uh, not an anagram, it's a hidden. <laughs> oh, my goodness, that's so embarrassing. Oh, dear. There, recite the rosary is, is literally holding the answer. If you look inside recite the rosary, you can see spelt out T-E-T-H-E-R. As a last one in, that's appalling. Wow. Okay, but it did justify improvident, didn't it? So this is what I would submit. Um, let's... I mean, Agile Gibbon, Gibbon could be, I mean, is there such a thing as an Elige Gibbon? Probably not. I think this is a tail race. I mean, there's a lot in here that's very, very difficult, in my opinion. A lot of, uh, but anyway, this is what I would go for. Let's go for it, and then we'll submit without leaderboard, because I'm not racing, obviously. Have I, have I got anything 
catastrophically wrong. No, it's correct. That's great. Okay, and now we can now we can try and justify some of this stuff. So ident is the first thing. A short film or sound sequence used in broadcasting twice. So it is literally a jingle. I mean, that's that's just my ignorance. I didn't know that. Shortened form of identification. Okay, well that's great. Tail race. Let's look up tail race. The channel in which water runs away below a mill wheel or from a hydraulically operated machine. Let me see if mill race is a word. I thought I knew. Mill race is there. There we go. The current of water that turns a mill wheel. So perhaps a tail race is very similar to a mill race. Um, let's look at, I mean, there's quite a lot we could look up here. Tribune. Let's, let's check Tribune is a popular champion. A senior officer in the Roman Legion. A magistrate. A champion of popular rights. There we go. Um, oh, protuberant for proud. Goodness me, there's a lot in. I mean, think that I had a better vocabulary that I can. I still do these puzzles and come away from a puzzle like this, and you know, it feels like half the puzzle I didn't know what it meant. Yeah, protuberant. That's what I thought it meant. Sticking out. I suppose proud. Yeah, maybe if something is proud, it sticks out. Let's have a look at that. Uh, swelling, projecting, or standing out from a plain surface of a nail head. Oh, if, so if a nail is proud, it's pro it stands out. Goodness me, that's quite difficult, isn't it? Um, agile, I've got to look up agile given. given. I mean, that is, that's hilarious. Oh, it's not there either. It's not there! Oh, no way. Gibbon. Let's see if... Gibbon, right. Where is the agile Gibbon? It's not... Oh, it's not here. Um, the small Gibbon? There's a reference to a small Gibbon. I dispute there's such a thing as an agile Gibbon. Oh, there! There is no, there isn't. Look, a wow wow or a woo woo is the name of name of two types of gibbon found in Indonesia: the silver gibbon of Java, Java, and the agile gibbon of Sumatra. Good grief! Well, I've only been to Bali, so how was I meant to know that? Java and Sumatra types of gibbon. I don't know. Okay, uh, it's only just in the dictionary is how we could describe that. Um, should we look up tetrameters? That's a pretty word, isn't it? it? Sort of has a nice feel as you say it. Tetrameter. If a line of verse of four meters. Um, lighting up time. Elocute. Might as well look up that. I think it's a fairly unusual word, isn't it? Elocute. There it is. Often facetious to declaim. Um, and... Okay, was there anything else that was... Oh, dodos. Let's see if the plural of dodos always has an... Yeah, so it's... it's you can use either. It can just be D-O-D-O-S or D-O-D-O-E-S. Um, Begrime. I'm going to miss one out, aren't I, that people want me to look up. I'm sorry if I do that. I'm trying not to. I think that's broadly it. Um, it's pretty difficult. That really is. I mean, that's what I say. In the last year, there have only been um, there's only been one puzzle that is harder than that. So, and it's a funny one in a way because some of the clues, like odd, and even dodos to an extent, were write-in clues. But I think that the range of knowledge that you need to finish this is a, is quite is probably at the a high end. I mean, but I could have got tether straight away. I mean, that's credit to the constructor because recite the rosary looks like such a nice, you know, a nice expression that that's the perfect place to put a hidden answer because it never occurs to you that recite the rosary could have a hidden answer within it because it seems such a natural phrase. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to know what people think in terms of how, how, how you guys found it and whether it was, was it monstrous or was it fine? 
It must it must have been quite difficult. I mean, statistically, it's definitely quite difficult. But it's hard to put my finger on exactly why. I did find it quite difficult. But when, when, you, when you look back at it, you sort of say, well, I could have got that more quickly. Oh, I could have got that. You know, there's a few anagrams in there I could have got more quickly. Um, a few ideas I could have had in a little bit more with a little bit more efficiency. But thank you very much for watching, if you're still with me now. <laughs> um, and if you do enjoy these crossword videos, please, uh, extra special please, do drop a like onto the video. So we're trying to teach the algorithm that these things are really, they're really cool. Um, and the algorithm doesn't understand. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Look forward to the comments. We enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.